What's up? All right. I know this is like a long time freaking delayed. I'll just lay down so you guys can actually see me. And whatever. Sponsor plug. Erwin Disc Wheel. Uh, wanted to break down Iron Man New Zealand. Which um, you may or may not have known that I completed. Um, kind of a new thing for me. I uh, kind of super last minute was just kind of feeling like I really wanted to race. Um, and Iron Man New Zealand was coming up and it, the way it kind of worked out was just my logic was like, I do have big goals this year to race, um, full Ironmans. And I really, I really felt like there, because an Ironman is such a unique beast of a distance that there's no real way to effectively prepare for an Ironman without having done one previously. So my coach and I were like, well, why don't I just kind of somewhat low key go to Ironman New Zealand, make the infinite amount of mistakes that need to be made so that way we can fix the problems and hopefully not repeat them and have a good race in like Ironman Tulsa. Um, but Ironman is freaking hard. Like, seriously, what's up with that? Um, so, this is going to just be my quick breakdown of how the race went. Rant, review, thoughts, blah, blah, blah. Also, my bike freaking stabbed me when I was trying to get the pedal off. What a dick. Seriously. Just, that hurts so badly. So, um, Ironman New Zealand swim course is just a nice little, like, Along the coast of Lake Taupo, you go out, turn, come back, into the river, going out. Well, basically the whole whole swim, you have a pretty nasty current pushing you into the shore. I had a phenomenal plan. I was like, gonna, you know, I had a couple guys marked. I was like, I know exactly what I need to do. Lined up, far right, shortest line, Philip Courtney, this giant... Swiss man, um, just awesome dude. And I was like, this dude's like never missed the front group. So I'm like, perfect. I'm like, this is going to be the best swim ever. And we get sent off and it was like the most relaxed start ever. I was just like super relaxed on his hip, just chilling, got to the hundred meter mark. And I'm like, all right, where's everyone else? I looked over and the front group was freaking like, the last person in the front group was passing me, and I was like, oh, shit. Okay. Shot over to the left. Was able to get on the feet of the last person in the front group. As soon as I got on his feet, a gap from him to the front group opened. So I was like, all right, Chris, now or never. Boom. Went. And the gap just wouldn't get any smaller. It just got a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. So I was like, all right, this is pointless. Eased up. Let him come back around me. Um, and just sat on his feet. And then what happened is, basically, we s swam in between. So there was the front, well, there was Dylan McNeese, which, holy crap, he's a phenomenal swimmer. He swam, oh, do I have my phone? Here, I'll actually be able to tell you guys what. So he swam, like, 45 minutes. The dude is unreal how fast of a swimmer he was. And then I believe it was two minutes down from him was the front group, which was, like, the Braden Curry and others, friends. And then two minutes further back from him was me and what's his name? Uh, let's see if I can find the guy. I'm going to say it's Simon Courtney, maybe. Um, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but your first name is Simon. You're a phenomenal swimmer and I enjoyed swimming with you. So him and I got out two minutes behind the front group four minutes behind Dylan and then a further two minutes back was the actual second pack so not the swim still disappointed that I missed the front group but better than being in the second group kind of I had to spend a lot more energy because it was just me and him versus where if I was in a full group I would have been able to get a nice full draft but is what it is got on the bike um and around like the 18k mark, um, 
the Swiss man, Philip Courtney, went roaring past me. And this dude, his calf game is on point. I mean, just like he would put Ben Hoff into shame of how freaking insane his calves are. So he went roaring past me. And I was like, oh, there's a gap between him and whoever. I think it was Joe Skipper and Cam Brown were kind of had a gap. And like an idiot, I was like, well, I, I will just say I like panicked and like jumped to stay with him. And just like couldn't, like I was pacing with him, but I wasn't able to get into the 12 meter zone to get the draft benefit. So I was kind of like spending the same amount of energy as him like 20 meters back just not able to quite get up there and then occasionally he would like let off and I would be able to get into the draft and but then the roads were so rough that I like I could either pay attention on not crashing or I could pay attention to maintaining the gap so then all of a sudden the gap would go back out and it went like that until like a little bit then I finally was like this is ridiculous I'm dying to try and stay with this guy so I sat up and immediately Joe Skipper goes flying past Cam Brown wheel um and then they eventually caught philip so it just kind of shows that instead of panicking and jumping with philip i should have waited and calmly paced myself with cam and joe um and then it just like that was kind of just the beginning of the end for my day um it was a very lonely day i mean the bike just kind of went like at that point it was the day was over it was the race was over for me. I'm out of the race. You know, they all went on to have phenomenal races and I went on to finish. I don't really feel like dragging on because it really wasn't that fun and I really don't honestly want to remember it at all. I finished the bike and yeah, I finished the bike by myself. Basically, I didn't see it's another person for the entirety of the bike. Super lonely. A lot of time in my own head, which was surprising. A lot of time in my own head. Um... Okay, what are we at right now? Seven minutes, Jesus Christ. Um, Okay, long time I went ahead, got off the bike. I had nothing else to do today, so I might as well finish. Five hour, five, five hours later of walking, shuffling, jogging, whatever you want to call it, I finished the marathon to come in, finishing my first Ironman in 10 hours and 45 minutes. One of, actually, no, no, the... Worst, worst probably, okay, if you had to, let's be honest, probably the worst six hour block of my life would be the last hour of the bike and the five hours of the marathon. Just suffering. Just like, had nothing left in the legs, had nothing left in the body, had nothing left in the mind. The only thought was, might as well finish. Learned a lot. Learned a lot. I definitely don't think that had I not gone through this experience, would I be able to train properly for an Ironman? So, positives. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to make this video somewhat short. Uh, all my equipment was amazing. The roads here in New Zealand are super, super rough. Um, so, it was good to have just like, I, I felt there wasn't really anything to point to. It was more like, we need to adjust my training in a certain way which just will take time. We need to adjust my nutrition in a certain way, which will just take some more trial and error. I need to adjust my mental strategy a little bit at a certain time. Those are kind of like the three big lessons. So we're going to adjust those three things, stop, reassess, um, try again, go from there. Um, uh, Meredith Kessler is an amazing person. By the way, she kind of like looked after me. She helped me get this homestay. She's like the nicest person in the world. She showed me the whole course. Just want to give her a shout out because she's an amazing person. Straight up. Um, anything else other than Iron Man is hard and stuff. You know, all right, let's end it there. That was fun. Not really. I actually really don't want to remember that day for a long time. But we're packing up the bike. Flying home tomorrow. Hopefully I don't get the coronavirus. And yeah. Oh, I should rant for like 10 more seconds to get me into the 10 minute mark. Oh, subscribe. And please, 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 please like the video. Both of those things massively help the video a lot.
like you hit the like button it kind of boosts the video in the youtube algorithm which helps the channel a lot and subscribe i hope to see you guys in the next video um i'll be posting it pretty soon it's just a what's in a pro swim bag video i'll see you in that one bye